Bitcoin is dumping, meme coins are pumping. Honestly, what is going on in crypto? This is just another day. If you're new here, you should be enjoying the show because that's what crypto is all about, the show. And in this show, I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and three different Solana-based meme coins that are getting everyone's attention and giving the exchanges a lot of cash, plus making a lot of money for a lot of people. So let's go ahead and dive in right away. Bitcoin is currently, as of the filming of this video, at $65,000. It's dropped so far negative 3% today. It's at an interesting level, though. And before everyone starts panicking and vomiting and freaking out and flailing on the floor, sorry to be gross, but I just want to let you know a couple of things. For one, on the weekly time frame, for those of you that have the TBO, this long line of resistance right here, I know that Bitcoin went above $70,000, but this long red line right here, it's at $66,387. Just because this long line is there, last week we were above the line, we went up to 73,000. The week before we we had a high of 70,000. It's hard to ignore the super duper long lines. I mean, look back what happened right here. If you look back at April all the way up until October, these long lines on the TBO plotting out resistance, they are hard to ignore. Now, when the price successfully flips above, it now flips from red to green, meaning resistance to support, which is great. So what does this mean for the everyday trader? Well, it means that we have a couple of crucial levels to pay attention to. The weekly time frame is telling us that we have resistance up here at $66,000. There's also resistance slash support right here at about $59,603. This is our next level of support. And I'm just going to add that nice white line. And we're going to go to the daily time frame. And you'll be surprised by this, that the $59,000 price level happens to be just around this lower wick that we saw a couple weeks ago when we had a flash crash on this Tuesday on our ascent up to 70 k now, admittedly, the chart does look quite bearish. I want to point out a couple of things that I've shared with our members in the private Discord server many times over the last three years, honestly. And this is really simple to understand. The TBO indicator, the trending breakout indicator that we're looking at right now, we're looking at the standard speed of the TBO. This section in here, this is called the cloud all this green stuff. And inside the cloud, we have one, two, three, and four moving averages that make up the cloud. The cloud is green because it's a bullish trend. The thing you have to understand though about these bullish trends is that there will be pullbacks. It's normal to have these, well, to have price corrections. It's actually a healthy and a good thing to go up and to the right forever uh, is dangerous. And we're going to look at a couple of those charts in a minute. We've had periods where Bitcoin does shoot up, go sideways, and then bump, and it goes into the cloud. You can see here, these are all pierces into the cloud. Any time, or rather the first pierce is a better way to say it. When Bitcoin pierces into the cloud the first time, that is the first puncture of weakness. Think about a balloon. If you were to take a sewing needle or an extremely thin needle, not a pencil, not a tack, but extremely thin, and put some tape cellophane tape over the balloon and then take that pin and just insert it in and then unplug, right? Or unplug, uh, take it out. It's not going to pop right away, but it's going to slowly deflate over time. Now, if that, uh, that tape wasn't there, of course it would pop and it would explode real quickly. Think of these punctures like that. We get these puffs of air helping the price to go up, but each time we get a puncture, it weakens the price until finally we get these guys. TBO closed longs, which are the blue diamonds that we get a cross down, and then we get an open short. That's the TBO bear formula. I covered this extensively in 2021 and 2022. You can go back in history on this channel if you want to. I don't think you do, but the main thing is that once this happens, this is more likely to happen next. There's no specific strict timeline in which it must happen, but it's likely to happen. So I say that because if we look at the current price action for Bitcoin, we actually pierced the cloud right here on Saturday the 16th over this most recent weekend. Because it happened once, it means it's more likely to happen again. So we have another pierce 
And we didn't, cl- I guess we technically closed inside the cloud, but it's not really a, a real thick close inside the cloud. Like back over here in January, this was, this was a pullback and a half and the market was pretty depressed by that. You would think we're in the same spot, but Bitcoin is actually at 65K. It's still holding up well. Now, here's the thing about current price action. That's um, the good, the bad, and the ugly going back over here. It's likely to continue moving down to lower values. Um, Call it whatever you want. It's just normal to have a pullback. So where could it go? Well, $59,000 actually makes a whole lot of sense, mainly because we have a lower wick And it would be unlikely, in my opinion, for Bitcoin to exactly wick down to the same price then shoot back up, but we'll see. If things got really ugly, and again, I have a hard time believing this even more, we have support down here at $51,000 because we have old TBO resistance, which flipped green to support. So we're looking at some pretty big price differences compared to where we were. From the current price, it's only an additional 8%. That's not much. It would probably take two days for that to happen if we're going to grind lower. But dropping down here would be a severe dump down to 51K. This one is much less likely. So how do you approach a falling market? That's a great question. If you've just entered crypto and everything's just been going up and up and up and you were thinking, man, I wish I could get Solana under $200. You can now. Oh man, I really wish I could get Ethereum back at like $3,300 because it was up to $4,000. Like, oh man, I wish I... All those opportunities are now coming true. All those wishes you had for a pullback, now you have them. What are you going to do? You going to buy? Probably not. The way that these work, these pullbacks in a bullish market is that when we get a drop like this and the market starts to recover, people start to get really depressed quickly, way quicker than in a bear market because we've forgotten the emotions, the feelings of a bear market. So we're getting this temporary bear market, or for some, it might be PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder for a bear market vibe. So a drop over here, sorry, wrong button, a drop over here on trading view, you know, Bitcoin closing on negative 6% is nothing. It's not that big of a drop, but it feels so, so bad. So here's the thing you have to know about this. It's not as bad as it seems. The best way to approach the market right now is to look and identify or look for and identify support levels and add funds. I've already placed several trades. One of them already hit my take profit target for Tau or BitTensor. I bought on the dip, followed my trading plan, DCA'd in, which means that I bought more at a lower price, averaged on my buy price, price returned up, took profit. Now the rest is just sitting in profit and I'm just letting it ride. This is a common strategy that you got to at least entertain the idea of using, especially in a bull market, because when we have bullish moves. You're going to see the price shoot up real fast and you're going to be thinking, oh, I wish I could have got in. DCA allows you to do that. So if Bitcoin happens to drop again, it's only 8%. It wouldn't be a bad idea. And plus it's right below 60K. It's a great price level. Okay. If things were to get more aggressive, perhaps down here, Going over to the weekly time frame, we can also see that, gosh, the fast line over here on the daily time frame, which is a great, great entry, especially on the weekly for these pullbacks. And you can see the pullback that happened right over here. This one in January, this was during that bearish period where Bitcoin had moved up and then it fell inside the cloud. That was the lowest it went. But note that it wasn't low enough to actually hit the TBO fast line. That's normal. So that's why I'm saying it doesn't have to be this value of 49,686. It could be just above. That also makes sense at 51. So do things feel bad right now? Yeah, they don't feel as happy right now. But this is the opportunity that a lot of people have been asking for to get another chance, a second chance at buying at a good price. So DCA is your friend using the TBO and paying attention to long historical support and resistance lines like this one, like this one, I'm on the daily time frame, and the daily time frame will be your best 
friend with this. You can use the four hour, but understand that the four hour is not as reliable. The longer the time frame, the stronger the signal is. Something I teach in our courses, especially with the TBO. If I'm going to be using this on a 30 minute time frame, I'm going to get a lot of these bounces, which are great. And I mean, catching a bounce right here off the TBO support line right here on 4 a.m., you know, that yielded a nice 4% bounce, but was it the bottom? No. We have another long line of support here. Did it yield a bounce? Yes, it did. A nice 4% bounce again. Here we go. We have another drop, or rather there's another line of support. The price went against us, but it did bounce about 3%. We just hit support again. We might see another bounce as we go down lower. But the faster timeframes are really meant for intraday trading or scalping, not for this like long-term position entry strategy, okay? So the four hour, while we could use this as an interesting, well, to at least entertain a couple of these possible targets. Note it's 52K, which is just above this line of $51,507. So there are some correlations that are very interesting. But I favor the weekly and the daily time frame when it comes to support and resistance levels. So there we are. So let's go back to our list. Ethereum. Is Ethereum dead right now? Well, you know what? It, judging by the price action, you sure think so. We had our two TBO breakouts last week. And even though we closed a red candle last week, yes, we did close a TBO breakout. If I switch this to the TBO standard setting, there's no difference in the breakouts. Oh, never mind. This breakout went away. We got one last week. So there was a difference in the breakouts. So we have these two breakouts and I love using the fast speed setting here on the weekly time frame, just because I want to be notified of changes that happen ahead of time. It's just a little bit easier to use the faster settings on a slower time frame like the weekly. That way it gives me a better sense of the market where it's heading before it actually heads there. Currently, Ethereum is just below the 0.786 Fibonacci retracement level, which isn't bad. This is actually a level that was respected here on this bounce. It went right through it back here the week of the 26th. So it's not like it's epic in terms of support slash resistance, but it is a Fibonacci level. So it does have that, that strength to it, we'll say. On the weekly time frame, the fast line right now is approximately at 2749. Look, that's for that time again. So it's about 2750 or so. If we go to the daily time frame, no, that's very interesting that the level right here is 2716, just around that level. Now, the obvious place to look for a bounce, while the TBO is great, is also just using your eyes. So 3205 or 3200 makes sense because of this lower wick that we saw, the one I mentioned for Bitcoin a while ago. Now, if we zoom out to look for 3205, I don't see any complementary support slash resistance levels over there. It's just what happened. But note, let me hide the fib lines. Let me just make this super obvious. Note where it dropped to. TBO fast line. It didn't even touch it. It was just above. That's close enough to be a springboard bounce, which yielded a nice 26% profit. Now, we did get our TBO springboard bounce, but it's, <laughs> it's dropping. And that's okay. In this market, it makes way more sense. Instead of trying to go all in at the right time, it's way smarter to scale in uh, just to approach it more in levels where we're looking to add in this level. And if it falls on, add more down here. That's the way that we should be trading this market right now, in my opinion. And that's how I'm trading it. And that's how I'm getting really good results. So Ethereum still has the ETF decision coming up in May something or other, early or mid-May, I believe. And there are a lot of put um, options calls, or somehow that's the wrong way. There are a lot of put trades or put contracts um, for the $4,000 price mark for Ethereum because many traders thought that Ethereum won't go above $4,000 for the ETF decision. 
I personally think that it's more likely to see Ethereum rather than spot an Ethereum ETF be approved rather than it to be well, disapproved, rather for it to be rejected, mainly because of the, well, two things. The Bitcoin spot ETF took a lot of people by surprise and the market reacted very positively to that news. Shortly after that happened, Larry Fink, who I believe is the CEO of BlackRock, one of the world's, actually the world's largest asset manager, made a statement along the lines of, well, the interviewer asking, well, what's next? Well, the next thing is obviously an Ethereum ETF, a Solana ETF, a Cardano ETF. He just listed all these tokens. They're not sleeping on this. They know exactly what they're doing. So if you saw that all the news, all of the good news about the Bitcoin ETF made the price of Bitcoin shoot up about 75% and you were looking to accumulate this asset for the next ETF, would you really want it to keep moving up higher? And let me phrase it differently. And again, shout out to DZ for this. The, the ETF really launched here, back here in January. After it launched, the price fell a bit and then it shot up higher. So the thing about this is that while we did have a nice move up to that, there was a pullback. But the thing that I believe, and I believe that DZ is right, why would BlackRock want the price of Bitcoin to go below the listing price of the ETFs? So the, I wasn't planning on showing this, but the iShares Bitcoin Trust is doing extremely well since it was listed. It's up 54%. It was a max of 70%. Why would they want to let the price drop all the way back down to that level? They won't. They have literally endless amounts of money. They can buy as much as they want, and they have been buying millions of Bitcoin per day. With that said, if they saw what happened with Bitcoin and they're looking to push an Ethereum ETF next, it would make sense to push the price of Ethereum down to accumulate more at a better price. So to use some FUD, some news about Ethereum and these puts and all this stuff and $4,000 is going to be so tough. Yeah, keep it below 4000 So that way, when the Ethereum spot ETF launches, then the price can go up after that and everyone's going to be super happy with the performance of the ETF. Makes sense? So it's it's kind of a kind of a suspicion of mine, but we want to prepare. So we're looking at, I don't know why I just deleted that. We want to look at this level in here, just above 3,200 for an entry, or maybe here just above $2,750 or so for Ethereum. But having it drop down like crazy low, I have a hard time believing that. I think these are decent levels to look to DCA or dollar cost average into our positions. I also want to say something real quick. Um, if you've been trading this market and making good gains, but you never sold anything, slap yourself. I told you over and over and over, I said, take profits on the way up because there will be a pullback. You can watch the videos that I released over the last two or three months. When I appeared on around the blockchain, I would get a chance to say a couple words about the market and I would always say, take profits on the way up. It doesn't mean close your entire position and buy back in at a higher price. It just means just at least take a little bit, like 10%, 15, 20% out as it moves up higher. This is how you grow a portfolio. You don't grow a portfolio if you don't sell. Sorry to break it to you guys. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself because I want to talk about the meme, to- meme coins, but we can start one step below that with Solana. If you remember uh, the TBO on the weekly time frame, I said that the longer the resistance line is, the stronger the resistance is. The longer the time frame, the stronger the signal. So when I saw this level right here for Solana, this is where things were like last week, it was just ripping. Last week, Solana's up about 40%. I let people know in our memberships, wow, it's doing really well, but sorry to break it to you guys, but we have resistance here at $200. Does this mean that Solana will never break above $200? Absolutely not. It could definitely break above $200. I actually expect it to when we really see alts go crazy again. We're just having a small cool down period. We're just having a pullback. So targets for Solana, 
right now at approximately $113. Now I know this seems extreme. That is a very, very far drop, about 40% from where we currently are at about $186. But this is the weekly time frame. On a bull move like this, note that we haven't seen a return to the fast line, nor do I expect it to happen. The closest we got was about 16% away because this move is actually a lot higher, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's 19%. This one is 18%, 22. So the closest we cut to the fast line, 16% above it. So if we were to emulate that idea of 16% above the fast line, we're looking at 126.12-ish. So we'll say 126.32. Now I'm going to flip. Okay. We're just using logic here. We're just looking at the charts. We're trying to identify patterns. Check this out. If we go to the daily time frame, this is where the TBO shines. I'm trying to show you that you can use TA and you should with the TBO, but you should be able to use an indicator that accurately plots support and resistance levels for you. That gives you strategies that you can use. And that's what this indicator does. So check it out. We have resistance on the TBO on the daily time frame for Solana right here at $143. We have resistance right here at $117. And then right in the middle, we got $126. Interesting, right? If we were to go back over here, $117, I mean, that's a move of what, 7% above? That would be a very dramatic fall. But note how long this line of resistance is. It does move up slightly. Note the value here says 117, then it goes up to 118. So we're looking at like around 120 as being solid support, which means 126 is not out of the realm of possibility. We can also use our eyes clearly to find price-based support slash resistance. Lo and behold, this upper wick right here at $126 basically where we were talking about just a minute before. So we can use, we actually, let me rephrase that. We should be using technical analysis TA with the TBO to yield the best results. So based off of what's happening with the price right now, a juicy entry would be down here at $143. Admittedly, I what I would what I would rather do instead is I would look to start building a position just above the fast line and then at the most dramatic level, like right around here. The reason why is because I want to capitalize on panic. When I'm thinking about DCA levels for a lot of these charts, I'm not going to go real close. I want to, if, let me rephrase it, if there's going to be a dramatic drop, something really, really big happens I want to capitalize on a 30% drop as much as possible. While everyone's selling, I want to have my DCA orders being filled to get the most profit possible in my trades. That's how this works. So a drop of 12%, that would be great. It's actually more than that from the top. Um, And then a drop of 30% plus from the current price, that would be even better. From the top, there's actually a 40%-ish drop. And right there's a 23% drop. Those are big, big numbers. Most likely it's not going to happen unless there's some sort of real shakeout because the momentum is so strong for Solana. Now, before you guys think I'm just this permanent, like bearish scenario only kind of guy, I'm not. I want you to understand that Solana is insanely bullish. Even if it has a pullback, this line at the very bottom of the TBO is called the TBO slow line. This is the slowest of the four moving averages that comprise of the TBO cloud that I talked about before. This is pointing almost at a 45 degree angle. This is one of the best bullish charts I've seen in a long time. If you're looking at this and you're wondering, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could scale in at this price. It was up $200. It's probably going to fall a lot, especially when I buy, it's going to drop. If you're one of those people, I highly recommend learning how to use a DCA bot, whether it's on three commas, Pinex, Altrady, use them because you can use a DCA bot to accumulate tokens that seem oversold that will most likely have pullbacks, but you can capitalize on that while you're doing everything else. I'm doing this right now, actually, with another chart that I'll share in a video later. 
but it's working extremely well. Literally hands-free accumulating a coin that's up over 350% as of the filming of this video. So I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Camry. So that, that bot is running really well, extremely well, and accumulating tokens like nobody's business, which is the whole point of DCA bot trading. Instead of me just buying some and hoping the price goes up from there, I can use a DCA bot to accumulate on the way up. That's the whole idea. Without over leveraging and without risking too much of my portfolio. It's brilliant. Okay. So even though Solana is having a, a little bit of a pullback, it's honestly just crazy bullish. I mean, this is a massive, massive run up over the last four days. It's crazy. So why is this happening? Well, thanks to these three tokens, in my opinion, this is why it's happening. First off, it's Boom. Now, to be honest, I was actually trading Boom, but I wasn't trading it on the daily, the four hour, or the 30 minute time frame. I was trading it on the one minute time frame. How could I do such a stupid and irresponsible thing? Well, when you have a trading plan, for newly listed tokens and you understand how the TBO works, you understand support and resistance levels, you understand Fibonacci stuff, Fibonacci retracement levels, you can make a lot of money. Now, to be transparent, I made over like $2,000 trading this token. To some, that's a lot. To some, that's nothing. That's how much you pay in gas <laughs> for your Suburban, your 12 Suburbans. I don't have any cars because I live in Japan. I take the train. So here's the thing. When charts are crazy bullish and you see them on the minute time frame making moves of 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, you can use the TBO to give yourself some confidence even on a faster time frame. For instance, look right here. This is a TBO breakout cluster. I talk about these a lot in my posts. Even though it's on the one minute time frame, it's still a TBO breakout cluster. This is letting us know that it's more likely for the price to break out higher. Note, where does this TBO breakout cluster happen? This happens right at resistance. See that red line right there? So this is resistance. It's normal to see breakouts happen at resistance because that's what it is. Usually a resistance breakout. This successfully saw the price shoot up 26%. This is the minute time frame in about 28 minutes. 26% in 28 minutes. That sounds incredible. Now, here's the not so fun part that you're not going to like to hear. While this chart was amazing and making higher highs, it went all the way up to almost 30 cents, almost 30 cents. Um, it did an incredible job. It is extremely bearish right now. If we go to the four hour time frame, it's dropping a lot. If we switch just to the five minute time frame, not a big difference from one. But we can actually invert that same concept. We can literally do the same exact thing that we just did on the minute time frame, but on the five minute time frame. When we know the chart is globally macro, macro on the four hour, but you know what I mean? It's bearish. We can actually do the inverse. See those yellow dots? That's a TBO breakdown. Guess what? We can use these as an entry when we break support or we have a pullback to the fast line and just let it run. Like, it's crazy. We don't have to just be long only, especially because we're talking about futures. That means we can go long and short. You can use the TBO in both directions. And just understand that leverage trading is a very, very, very risky thing. You can make a lot of money, you could lose a lot of money. You have to know what you're doing. So the reason why Solana increased so much over the last couple of days, in my opinion, is because there was a boom in, in all, oh, sorry, in meme coin trading, specifically on Solana. Slurf had a kerfuffle recently where the devs did a boo-boo. They made a mistake and they burned like $10 million of tokens that were in a liquidity pool. Now, reducing the supply like that had a negative effect on their finances, but it had a very positive effect on the chart. Now, this isn't even the full chart. You'd have to go to Dex Tools to see it. But even here, uh, this is on Bybit from the low on Monday, 
night, which wasn't actually very long ago, because again, this is the five minute time frame. This is, well, right now today, it's what, 247-ish on Tuesday. So yeah, this is last night, honestly, for me. But we saw this price shoot up 300%, but on Dex Tools, when it was listed from the pre-sale, it's up like 20,000%, something crazy like that. The reason why Solana is pumping so much is that people are buying Solana so that they can trade all this stuff. It's normal. It happens. This actually happened a lot more in 2020 and 2021. When Ethereum did the 2.0 contract or the upgrade, and the whole idea with 2.0 is that you had to buy Ethereum and stake it and you would earn a yield on that. It was one of the best times to actually do it until they were had to figure out a way to unlock the Ethereum because people were starting to complain. But they were trying to figure out ways to make Ethereum more appealing. It worked. The price of Ethereum went up because people bought because of demand. Then other tokens started to see what was happening too. So they decided, well, let's figure out what we can do. And Binance Coin followed the same concept, except they decided to turn the Binance Coin, the exchange coin, into an ecosystem. So there's the BSC, the Binance something chain or whatever. That's probably what it stands for, to be honest. And then there's PayCakeSwap, there's all this stuff. And they had coins, tokens that were on BNB only on BNB. So if you wanted to participate and buy those coins and make money, you had to buy BNB, which drove the price of BNB up a lot. Now we're seeing a similar demand for Solana that was not previously there before. So why meme coins? Well, we literally just looked at this one. I mean, why meme coins? Why not? This coin literally in the last, this is happening right now. This looks like a daily chart. This isn't. This is the five minute time frame. This candle right here alone in a five minute period, that's 20% in a five minute period. Why meme coins? Because they can make you a lot of money in a short time. As a trader with leverage, these become extremely dangerous. But when you have the right tools, and you, you look, we got TBO breakout right there. See above resistance and the price shot up 59%. Absolutely insane. So the price is on the cloud right now. Uh, the way I would trade a chart like this, honestly, would be going back to the one minute time frame to get some support and, sorry, support and resistance bounces like right there. There's a support and resistance bounce. Uh, admittedly, I wouldn't take that right there. I mean, I would look for a bounce like this. And this is called a TBO springboard bounce where you enter on the TBO fast line and you just sell on the bounce. That's it. That's a 9% move in one minute. One minute. Crazy. But you can see this happening all over the place. Look, there's a springboard bounce right here. This one resulted in 22% over 10 minutes. Here's another one. That's a 14% move. Here's another bounce. That's 6%. Here's another bounce. Note it went into the cloud. And then it pumped like crazy. Like this is all on the span of an hour. Even just entering at the TBO breakouts and holding for an hour, that's a 77% increase. You guys have no idea how crazy this is, how crazy crypto can be. So understand that the minute time frame can be very stressful to watch and to trade. I'm going to tell you. When I was trading bones, I had a trading strategy. I noticed something, it was working. I checked the chart. It's a brand new chart, so it's extremely risky, like Slurf. And I was looking at it going, okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to follow it no matter what happens. I did, and I walked away with my money. I actually have a great uh, video. I believe it's a bonus video hidden somewhere on YouTube, but I actually have a blackjack story. I don't gamble. I don't view trading as gambling, but I had the opportunity to go to Las Vegas years ago and uh, it was for like a family reunion. And I thought, well, what's like, I guess I could gamble. I don't know though. I'm kind of nervous about it. And I found out about blackjack and it actually has the best odds because you can learn to count cards, which I did. And you can learn which cards are the best ones with the best odds, but that's only part of it. I also learned about risk and I also learned about when to walk away. And I had a system. Every time I made X amount of dollars, I would pocket it and start fresh again. I didn't compound my profits. I didn't do anything like that, but I did walk away from the table rich. It was great. You have to look at this the same way. 
especially on the one minute time frame. If you're going to do the five minute time frame, that's great. But just look for a system, look for a strategy that works for you and stick to it. That's the main thing. Whether you're using the TBO or something else, make a trading plan and stick to it. That is literally one of the rules in the Better Trainers Journal. I know it's really small, but that's literally what we teach in the courses. And it's helped a lot of people, including myself, every single day. The last chart I want to look at is one that has a lot more history. Because when we look at these charts on the weekly time frame, it's crazy. Like it's just up so far 100%. Boom, shot up from open to, or up. let's just do wick to wick for fun. 600% over a couple of days. Whiff, when it first launched, this is again, dog whiff hat. And this is one of the other Solana-based meme tokens. This launched back uh, December, the week of December 2018. When it launched, it had an amazing week, 250%. And then from the high, it dropped about 81%. If you're going to stick with these tokens, understand that it could take some time for them to move up a bit higher you're going to want to have a plan in place. This is where trading with futures gets you stuck because could you really enter a position here along at 30 cents only to have it drag down 78%? No, you can't. You'll get liquidated. But could you, pay attention to my wording here, could you trade a chart like this with leverage, take your profits and invest it into the spot asset, which is what we're looking at right now? Yeah, of course. Why not? The intelligent thing to do when it comes to leverage trading, and I want to make this big because I want you to hear this, is if you're going to do leverage trading, do something with the profits after you take them. If you just compound it in the next trade, that's fine, but have a plan. Even at the end of the month, take some of those funds, buy some Bitcoin, buy some Whiff, buy some Slurf, is that what it's called, or Boom. Like buy any of these meme tokens that you want, but use the profits that you've made and put it into the spot token because the chances are is that you won't be able to hold a leveraged long position through the volatility that we've been seeing. It's going to be really hard. So make sure that you're doing something with those profits so that way you can reinvest them into something, into a spot position that you can continue to build over time. Just, just think about it. Just entertain me about it, okay? Um, a couple of quick little treats for you. I usually don't do this, uh, but I'll, but because it's you and you've watched up until this point, I would love for you to know that on Discord, on the Better Traders Memberships Discord server, we have an alert that's included called the Stop Loss Hunting Alert. This thing has been firing off like crazy. Um, over the last four or five days, it's just been going absolutely nuts. It accurately predicted the first pullback that we had. If I go to the chart for Bitcoin, the first alert here is on March 14th at 7.30 p.m. If we go over here, March 14th at 7.30 p.m. Let's go back to the 30. Right here. So the alert went off right there. And no, it's not the TBO close long. So far, the alert has saved people a lot of drawdown, not just for Bitcoin, but for everything else. As soon as Bitcoin dropped and cracked below 73, the market has fallen a lot and it keeps going off. Be careful. This doesn't mean the price is going to go down. It just means be careful. And this is only one of the things that we have. Because, uh, I won't get into the other things, but I can highly recommend that you check out our membership subscription. This thing is only getting better. See what I did there. Uh, but you go to the links that provided down below to thebettertraders.com, hit memberships, and you can learn more about what we offer in it. We have a lot planned for the memberships. You guys are really going to like what we have for you. I want to take a second to remind you even though we're having a pullback, it's not the end of the world. It's normal and it's healthy to have pullbacks. Look for areas that you want to DCA or buy more of a position on the coins that you like or that you want to trade to make a profit on. If you didn't take profits, you know what? Get a sticky note, write down, take profits. Put it on your trading desk, put it on your monitor so it's there and you see it and you're like, oh, yep, got to take profits. 
let this just be a lesson moving forward. The market is not done. The bull market is far from over. This is just a pullback and it's temporary. So look for opportunities to DCA into positions. And then when they return, consider say, you know, consider selling some, taking some profits, you know? And when it comes to meme coins, if they're giving, just understand that you've got to be quick and nimble and you need to stick to your trading plan, whatever it is, whether you're using the TBO indicator, the trending breakout indicator or not, make sure that you stick to your trading plan no matter what. So until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace. <laughs>